Welcome to the Scale Builders Guild. It's a special Thursday live What's on the Bench weekly because every eighth episode, uh, this is what we do. So, welcome. <laughs> now, I know that said episode 16 because I forgot to update it, but it's episode 24. Uh, and, uh, if you are not familiar with what's on the bench, um, what should I do with my hands? Um, usually what's on the bench is all about projects that I have going on on the bench. And, uh, I will share things with you and, you know, make changes and update things and try stuff. And, uh, that's what this is kind of going to be about. Um, <laughs> If you're not familiar with it, but you probably should be because there's 24 episodes for you to watch. Plus a bunch of other really one, uh, really good ones too. So um, hopefully everyone's doing well, better than me probably. Uh, check in, let me know where you're watching from and how many times your Jeep's been stolen out of your driveway. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, might I just say your color correction is spot on. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, it's, uh, you know... Not the best day I've ever had, ever. Um, what are we watching again? Uh, this is what's on the bench. And uh, what we're going to do here is swap over to the bench um, format here in a second. We're going to do that right now. Here we go. And we're going to get rid of my background. Poof. This is the best for me. I love this part. Um, zero times, but no one wants a Jeep Patriot. Ah, <laughs> uh, how very true. I, uh, I also, I didn't have the Patriot. I had the Compass for a while, way back when. Um, what's the story with the Jeep? Uh, well, um, I woke up this morning to it not being in my driveway. And I was like, I'm pretty sure I left it in the driveway. Anyway, uh, long story short, uh, thieves stole it. No two ways about it. There are sophisticated uh, security systems in place, and there are sophisticated ways to defeat those systems. And uh, what we presume happened was they spoofed the key uh, and drove away silently, because it's a hybrid. So, yeah. Not much else we can say about it, unfortunately. Um, a lot of people have asked, you know, did you contact jeep or the sirius U connect or any of those things yes obviously i did those were the first things i did <laughs> um well after calling the police of course um called the police called the insurance company uh called sirius guardian and uh the moment your car has been reported as stolen uh, all of those systems kind of go into sort of uh, like a, a sort of a, a mode where you cannot track the vehicle any longer. And I'm sure it's a, a protective thing uh, for you because they don't want like vigilante style justice. They don't want people chasing after criminals with, you know, like, that's my car. So <laughs> I'm going to leave it to the professionals. If it uh, if it shows up, that's great. I'd be really happy to get it back because those are in short supply and they're hard to get. And... Um, if uh, it doesn't show up, well, then we're going to have to approach that as it comes. <laughs> Dang, Josh really, really going out of his way to out-prank Matt. Yeah, <laughs> I wish that's what it was. <laughs> I wish it was a prank. I actually it was like, Rebecca, you didn't by chance, like, sign me up for overhauling, did you? <laughs> no, she didn't. She's like, I would never do that, ever. So, uh, put the live track back out and catch them. Yeah, I wish, Chris. I wish it was that easy. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate. Um, but you know what? At the end of the day, and I've said this uh, a few times today already, but it's just stuff. It's just a thing. Those things can be replaced. Uh, I would uh, I would be a lot more concerned if it were uh, something that had happened to me or something that had happened to Rebecca or to our animals or anybody in the family. So, you know, if it's just a thing that's been taken, fine. It's all you can do. Um, so, uh, yeah, what's on the bench weekly, uh, episode 24. What we're going to do uh, this week is a few things. Um, but the first thing I want to show you, actually, I might switch to the other view because it's a little easier to do. 
uh, and we'll turn off background removal for a moment. Um, but uh, fine laser designs. Um, Kevin over there sent me a mount to, uh, to, for <laughs> the SCX6 Honcho specifically. And, you know, uh, I was talking about this a little bit last night, but don't you just hate body clips, especially the ones underneath these massive trucks? The thing about them is it's very hard to get at them, and uh, they're a little unwieldy, and when it's cool outside, it's even harder to uh, to get under there with your, your mitts or your gloves on. So he's created a little clip mount. It's actually not little at all. It's huge, as you can see. Um, but it's right there. And um, it's like come hither motion, but for larger scale. And it just, because the honcho body's already hinged, this makes it so easy to get at. And so effective at closing. Ah, oh, that satisfying snap. Nothing beats that. Uh, he also makes these for the JLU SCX6, uh, SCX10-3, and SCX24s. So you can have this little clip thing here as a very secure way of mounting your body. I absolutely love it. Makes this thing so much better. It's a game changer. Um, the description, the link is in the description below. So if you wanna go check one of those out, order one up, uh, he will make them and send them for you. Got an Etsy shop and it's fully loaded. So go check that out. Definitely an awesome piece. All right. Back to the bench. Looks like I'm riding the SCX6 to work. Yeah, well, I've got the Baja too. I could drive that or the XRT. Uh, those are all all good. So, um, yeah, Ke there's Kevin right there. That snap gets me every time. Yes, all those trucks. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Glad you love it. And Kevin, I do very much love it. So thank you very much for sending that my way. It uh, changes the game, as one might say. Uh, can I take your Ripper? Brian Sherwood, no, you may not. Ripper is not, Ripper, Ripper should have a low jack on it. Now that I think about it, actually. Are those pieces 3D printed? Yeah, they're uh, resin uh, printed. Uh, so they're very thick. They work very well. Uh, because of you, I ordered that clipless system from my SCX6 Jeep last night. Hey, all right, Gerald, that's great. Um, now you can step up to a Toyota. Oh my God. No. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Hook up all the 6th and 5th scale trucks onto the wagon. Might be able to take it on the highway. Yeah, Form Labs tough. Yeah, there you go. Engineering grade uh, resin prints. Uh, Form Labs is no joke. Uh, so there you go. Okay, we have the Mashigan chassis here in front of us today. Um, I'm going to try to get a little more... A little more bright and a little less defocused here. Oops, hang on. Oh, too bright. Too bright. That's better. Come on now. Stay there. Yes. Now. Go that way. More focus. Excellent. Okay. Right back where we started. Electric skateboard with mud tires. There we go. All kinds of great options out there. Um, Chuck's RC Habit, thank you very much. Good evening, Matt. Glad to see what's on the bench live. Definitely getting those for both SCX6s. Mashigan is awesome. Thank you. Uh, the body's back there. You can't see it now. But um, I'm not getting a Gladiator. Don't worry. If anything, uh, it'll be the hybrid again. That's sort of my goal. I kind of want to stay in the, the hybrid realm if I can. Um, we're going to... Uh, why is that way out of focus? Come on, man. Focus. There we go. All right. So what we're going to do today is we're going to uh, pop out this 35 turn brushed motor and the 1040 ESC that comes with the Mashigan. And we're going to step up to um, this smart Firma uh, 70 amp uh, brushless. God, focus is all over the place today. Surely we can go seems so dark, but I guess it isn't. 
the yeah this gearbox is bizarre um no joke uh, very strange uh, but we're going to install this uh, motor and ESC combo. Uh, this has a lot more programmability than the 1040 uh, and will be an overall much better, smoother, better, gooder, excellent solution. Um, and uh, these wheels, somebody was just asking what wheels and tires are these. Uh, these are CC Hand uh, Jeep wheels you can get them on aliexpress that's where i found them anyway they are superior in the accuracy department um there's the whole motor and transmission unit don't call us surely <laughs> surely you know what i'm talking about uh i think we're gonna have to take some of these parts apart to get at this you can use your neighbor's snowblower on your driveway now yeah because there's literally nothing in it actually that's not true wrong one i got a rental car from the insurance company and funny story guess what they gave me a sahara hmm. <laughs> they're like we've got a jeep do you want a jeep i was like yeah i know i know jeeps i know how to drive them give me one of those and uh yeah sahara Womp womp. It's okay. Saharas are okay. <laughs> RC with RC. Thanks very much. Best way to get tattooed watching Scale Builders Guild Live. Right on. That's great. Say hi to your tattoo artist for me. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have to pull apart the transmission because transmission things. So let's zoom in. There we go. I wish there was an easier way. Uh, yeah, GCM is going to be doing a uh, conversion kit for the mash again as well. Would that 1040 make a good anchor for an RC boat? <laughs> I don't think it's even good for that. If I'm honest. Could have been a sport. True enough, Tina. True enough. Yeah, I actually I thought it was going to be a sport. Is the rental Jeep at least a stick? No. Automatic. Automatic. Plain old automatic. Don't oh man, there's so many things to take apart just to get the motor off. Are you safe to use Krylon on RC four wheel drive hard bodies? Yes. I would still prime with a Krylon primer though. I still can't believe someone just up and took a Jeep, a full-sized at that. Yeah, well, despite what people might think, Jeeps are pretty popular. And um, they tend to uh, garner a lot on the dark web black market, I guess. Do I ever plan to swap the transmission? Uh, yes, I would probably swap the trans at some point. I think ultimately, though... Um, I, what I would end up probably doing more than anything is swapping the entire chassis. I will I will end up going to like a VS410 or something um, to go underneath this body. Because the body is fantastic. This chassis is a bit... What? But it's okay. It's okay. Now, they labeled this as a 550, but I don't think that's a 550 can. I think that's... Well, actually, you know what? Yeah, it is. That's a 550 for sure. All right, let's get into this smart technology. Technology. Now, this uh, is about the same footprint in terms of the ESC. Of course, it's got one of those gigantic, weird things on the motor. They always put these like magnet resistance doodads on these motors. I don't know why. Anywho, uh, rebuildable motor. If you are so inclined, you can change the brushes and whatnot. And now this is out of focus. Come on, man. There we go. Caution. 
Hot. I need a sign that says that for me. Now they include a bunch of LEDs? What? <laughs> what are these for? I didn't know those were included. Is that a thing they include? Must be something for like the axial models. Includes built-in smart telemetry. Yes. Says nothing about LEDs on the box. So I guess that's a bonus. It's news to me. RF emissions. Yes. It's a 545 can. <laughs> so yeah, I guess you get included LEDs, which is completely news to me. Uh, did not know that. That's cool. Uh, here is the ESC. Um, it's tiny. As you can see, that's a nice small footprint, which is great for the Mashigan. It's got these two little grommets here, so you can screw it down onto a, a, a board or something. I'll probably just tape it in as we get to that point. Um, but let's get the motor on there first. Because now that I've taken apart the transmission and done other things, I will have now completely forgotten what order things are supposed to go in in there. Good stuff. <laughs> Sure, I'm sure I'll be able to figure it out. Dynamite combo comes with the same LEDs. Well, guess what? I think it is, uh, under the Horizon brand, I think it is still technically a Dynamite. But, I mean, they're, they're labeling it as a Firma Spectrum kit. All right, let's see how I did at setting that pinion. Terribly. It has to... It has to go the other way. <laughs> Looks like the 1060 Hobby Wing. There's a lot of carryover. I'm sure it's if it's not dynamite, it's Hobby Wing. That's generally how the Spectrum stuff goes. <coughs> Excuse me. Would this be a good setup in a lunchbox? Well, Jesse, uh, not... Well, yeah, probably. Maybe the 35 turn. Uh, I'm not sure what the gearing is like in a lunchbox. So... You're going to have to kind of um, tell me if that's good or not. Uh, what do you usually have in a lunchbox? I, I would say you might want to go with that 15 turn. Because uh, that's an option as well. They they have that as, a, as an option. All right. I think we're going to set that mesh pretty perfectly there. It's great. According to Horizon, the LEDs are included. All right. Very cool. Thank you, JD's RCs. News to me. That's okay, though. Now, don't lose pins. Because there's a pin on the back side of this part of the transmission. You can see if it ever comes into focus. Which it doesn't want to. There we go. And that's got to align with that gear there. Yep. I think we didn't get it. <laughs> hmm. Oh, yeah. No. Hang on. Let's put it on this side. There we go. Perfection. All right. Good. Good. Don't lose pins. Famous last words. I should have my cow RC magnetic mat out, but I don't. That would be extra helpful. 15 turn definitely in the lunchbox. There you go. And uh, did I see Turbo TT there thanking me for the suggestion on downloading 7 gigabytes of Resolve for free? Excellent. I'm glad that you got that. All right. Um, so, uh, it's going to be like 15 days before insurance and the authorities decide that the Jeep is gone. Which, I, you know what? Honestly, it's not like kids took it for a joyride. That's not the scenario we're in here. No Loctite. No, no Loctite. Everything's screwing into plastic here. 
Uh, right. Now we can put the, that back on. Um, so I kind of have to, and I have, the rental is good for the 15 days. Then I'm going to need to either start paying for my own rental or assuming it doesn't get recovered, I'm going to have to start looking for my own vehicle. Uh, and it's not like there's four by E's just sitting on the lot here. There's a few, but there are models that I'm not interested in. So is it a Jeep or is it another hybrid or is it full electric? Like what, what should I do? What should I do? All right, there we go. That was super easy. Why does it feel like something's missing though? Shouldn't be able to turn it that easily. It's definitely not turning the rotor, so... Slipper. That's what it is. Let's tighten that slipper. No, no, that can't be it. Let's go back through it. Check it again. Uh, it's always best to check once. I won't be getting the 392. I'm looking for uh, less spending at the pump, <laughs> not more. Ah, uh, yeah. We missed the mesh entirely. That's why the mesh seems so smooth. <laughs> Let's try that again. Buy a Gladiator and send it to Ben. See, that's the other thing. I am so happy i did not put any upgrades on it like new wheels or tires or lift kits because that stuff i don't think you would be able to get insurance to cover any of those things so i'm i'm happy that i kept it stock certainly not as uh interesting as a, as a stock vehicle but i liked it i liked it a lot Be a cool kid, get a YJ. <laughs> is that what kids are? Is that what? Is that what's cool now? No, it's the kids who are wrong. Uh, unfortunately, I bet your Jeep is already in several crates. I don't even think it's in several. I think it's just in one. Like I bet you, it's gone to like another country, and somebody was like, "I would really like a Jeep, please," and then somebody finds a Jeep puts it on a container and off it goes that's what i think happened which is a super bummer it still hasn't really hit me you know the other thing i'm pretty happy about uh i didn't have anything in the truck like i, I don't keep anything in the truck anyway it's not really my my thing i always take everything out just because i don't like losing things if I uh, if I don't have to. Um, there we go. Is that meshing now? Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Real Jeeps have headlights. <laughs> Real Jeeps exist in your driveway. No personal items, and also nobody got hurt, right? Like... That was the thing. I have a Nest Cam, but it's set to packages only. Do they drive it or tow it? I have no idea. I was I was asleep, and the camera didn't catch anything because it's not set to people. Um, it is what it is, though, guys. I'm not. I'm trying to be as pragmatic about this as I can be. Right, exactly. I could have, like, imagine I was awake and I heard I heard some commotion and I go downstairs and I'm like, what are you doing? And then, you know, who knows what could happen then? That would be something I would, I would not have been prepared for, <laughs> if I'm honest. So I'm glad that that didn't happen. All right, cool. Now we're cooking with gas. That's much better. 
Uh, did they leave your Cheez-Its or toolkit on the sidewalk? <laughs> no. They, darn it, They. I had good car snacks in there this time. I had a bag of this, like, peanut, corn nut, pretzel, cheese crisp, sesame snap, snack mix. And it's gone. I'm never getting that back. There was also a quilt that my mom made. It was just sort of a... It was a cast off. It wasn't like a real quilt, but it was like a quilt that my mom made for the dog for when he goes in the car. And that's gone. Had a nice charging cable in there. All right. Not the jerky. No, no jerky was harmed in the uh, stealing of my Jeep. Canada is safe. I don't want people to think it isn't. It's obviously a very safe country, but theft can happen anywhere that's the, the the main sort of thing here all right so that's done and let's tighten that slipper because that was it's actually not going to be easy to do actually yeah yeah it will yeah it will uh let's get the drive cup back on there uh, Dr. Memer, there's no, we don't talk about any of that stuff here, so don't worry about it. <laughs> it's not a thing. No politics, just tiny trucks, please. Um, they'll need the extra cable, but the quilt was extra. I'm also kind of bummed because I just filled it up with gas for the first time in like four months. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, darn it, they got a full tank of gas out of me. You scums. Okay. Put this transmission back in. May have to bend these motor cables out of the way. Of course, it doesn't want to fit properly. Oh, no, that's good. There we go. Okay. Mount that back in there. Oh, wait. Ah, uh, put the drive shaft in. Then mount it up. There we go. Focus, man. There. I should have a focus man. Like, just a guy who's like, his job is to focus. Uh, Eric, we already, I looked at all the, the security footage. Of course, my neighbor, his camera is pointed towards the Jeep, but they got in on the passenger side. And it didn't trip because he has it set to low sensitivity as well. So it is what it is, guys. Um, all of the things have been exhausted as far as I can tell. Uh, oh, you know what? Maybe while we're at it, we should change the servo on this too. <laughs> the transmission looked better out of focus. <laughs> Do you guys know who developed this Jeep? Are you, are you talking about Chuck Mashigan? Did the dog wake up? No, he didn't. The hybrid drive is silent. So when they drive away, when they were stealing the truck, it was dead silent. It wouldn't make any noise at all. Lest, lest uh, we forget here, let's, um, let's tighten that slipper clutch. Where are my pliers? Um, which way do we need to turn it? How's the temp down here? Uh, feeling pretty good today. Uh, it's not very chilly outside. Uh, we're getting sleet, overwhelming amounts of sleet today. We're just barely above freezing. There we go. Smush. Perfection. Uh, next Jeep needs a V8 in it, as that is a theft deterrent. Or just a manual transmission. That That's usually enough, too. Okay. Okie dokie. So that's that done. Let's get a servo. I'm going to go grab a servo. Don't go anywhere.
It's probably overkill. In fact, I know it's overkill. Quick, someone toss it in the trash. Uh, who's this Chuck guy? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna throw a. I'm gonna throw a uh, Reefs 500 raw in there, because um, you know it's a pretty heavy truck. So why not? Why not go the maximum on this, right? There we go. Now you can see. Ish. How did they mount this? Uh, torque might be a difference, Mark. Um, I'm not too concerned about it. It definitely wasn't underpowered or overpowered. How did they mount this servo in there? Only two bolts? That can't be right. Yeah. It's only got two bolts on it. What the fuck? What? These guys are crazy. Unbelievable. Uh, that was a beautiful Jeep. You are absolutely right. But that's, uh, you know, that's how it goes. Maybe I'm not allowed to have nice things. Let's get that out of there. Only two screws. That's such a bizarre way to mount a servo. Can't say I like that. So weird. Oh well. Uh, zoom out, man. Weight savings. <laughs> right. They were trying to save weight. They put all the weight in the hard body and they're like, you know what? Let's add a, let's take a little weight out of there. Out of the chassis. No garage, I guess. No, I'm in downtown Toronto. I don't have a garage or car hole as some of you might better, uh, better know it. Two bolts with the torque of that raw might become interesting. I don't disagree. That might be very interesting. We'll see how it goes. Such a bizarre way to do it, though. And fitment issues. Looks like this is a little thick. <clears throat> so let's do some trimming. Where's my Dremel? Now, be careful. This can get away from you. RC Underdog, thank you very much. What is your favorite cost-effective servo? Also, how could I send you files to replace your broken stand? Um, well, you could email me. That would work. Um, Matthew at scalebuildersguild.com. And that would be very, very kind of you, because it did get pretty broken up in shipping, because Josh has enough brains. I feel like I'm overwhelmed by stuff already. How did this even happen? Better question is, where's your Jeep? Yeah, that is a great question. I don't know. So there's a little bit of extra material here. I'm just going to shave away some of this. Didn't get away from me that time. Halifax is the port. Hey, I bet you it went to Montreal. If I'm honest, that's where I would go. It's only five hours there. Now I'm just, you know, dangerously using a blade here to try to trim away some of the rest of the material that I couldn't get at for. go hopefully this is enough i do find the reef servos are a little bit larger uh, than most 
<laughs> With the glasses and rotary tool, you could moonlight as a dentist. <laughs> now, this isn't going to hurt a bit. Ah, there we go. Look at that. Almost perfection. Just maybe need a little bit more on the edges. There we go. Perfect. Success. You can go check for me. Port is only 15 minutes away. All right. New sticker idea. Where's my Dremel? I got a better sticker idea. Where's my Jeep? Because <laughs> I, I want that back more. <laughs> Perfect opportunity to get a Toyota. Oh, man. I'm not buying a Toyota. I love them, but I love the old ones a lot more than the new ones. I am shocked that there were only two two uh two mounts here only two screws that server looks ready to break something it's the raw 500 beast i've got the thousand uh i think it's a thousand got the beast 1000 in the scx6 down there um, so many, many servos. Hey, Brian Harrison, thank you very much. Got a new job for Christmas. Hey, congratulations. I'll get to play with a lot more toy cars. I'll have to send you samples of my first product. I look forward to that, Brian. Thank you very much. And congratulations. What a great Christmas bonus that is to get a new job. Congrats. Uh, and John Roberts, 1.6 RC. Thank you. Hi, Matt. Uh, were you able to check to see if the Mashigan body fits the BRX02? Sorry to hear about your Jeep. Hey, we can do that tonight. Your key fob was in the house. They bounced the signal off the fob to start the Jeep. That's pretty much it, Super Greg. I think you nailed it. That's that's generally what they do. All right, so that's in. Um, and we're going to have to get a servo arm. Hmm. Do I have any of those? What's the question? More importantly, do I have a Reefs branded one? I usually do have those around somewhere but this was an exceptionally long horn if i correct quite it's quite horny <laughs> i'm sorry I, i'm fired i know uh is that gonna fit yes will it though hmm how did they have this set up we are witnessing a master at work. Oh my gosh, a master of none. Oh yes, they had it backwards, because that is that is the way. We're going to leave that off, though, until we get this all programmed up. Um, but that's good. That'll all work. Yes. Yes. Excellent. The desk is filthy, because the tires are filthy. Because I've driven this truck. Hey, House of Sin, you also got a new job. I start Monday morning, got fired this past Tuesday, and start on Monday with a pay raise. All right. Well, I'm sorry you got fired, but I'm sorry, I'm not sorry you got hired. Uh, Tony Spencer, thank you. I'm on a bit of a delay. I'm at JFK Airport, NYC, delivering 40,000 pounds of aluminum going to Naples, Italy. Sorry about your Jeep. Well, at least I've got at least you've got me to entertain you should have had a ridge wallet key fob yeah 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 um it's just you know it's one of those things man things happen not much you can do about it okay now that we've got the servo and the motor in i'm pretty sure we can um actually you know what we can probably see this this uh, servo or this ESC has the LED leads on it that has these built in so you could run uh, LEDs that come with directly off of this and then onto this uh, but at some point we're going to do a my trick RC light kit for the mash again so um, we're not gonna um, we're not gonna install any lights today but uh, let's get this part done I think I have a receiver handy so we'll get this on one of my radios instead of the radio that comes with 
Uh, we're just going to test it, make sure that everything is working polarity wise. And we'll put this up on a stand and turn it this way and back this up a little bit. I'm going to find my receiver. Of course, it's behind a bunch of other things. Okay, we'll toss those over there for now. And what should we do here? Plug this in. The throttle port. And you know, one of the things, and I haven't actually done any testing on this, but one of the things that's smart about these smart ESCs is that apparently you can program it from the radio, which sounds like the future to me. Uh, I did not say where I got these safety glasses from, but you can get these on Amazon. They are obviously the very popular Magid safety at work. <laughs> oh, and these stands, these are the uh, Crawler Innovation cell blocks. Very handle. You need a car people don't want to take. Have you thought about a Honda Fit? <laughs> I haven't, but that's an excellent idea. <laughs> I can get myself a Honda Fit. That's easy. All right, let's find a battery. Okay. Oh, all my smart batteries are the gigantic ones. I need an adapter. I usually have handy, but not today, of course. They've all got IC5 connectors on them. Here we go. All right. Not as prepared as I thought I was. What body is on this truck? This is the Mashigan, my friend. The, the Jeep, YJ. New model. Create. We'll make the name for it later. Let's bind this sucker up. Get connected. And turn on the ESC. Put that into bind mode, bind the radio, binding, binding, yeah. All right. Yes, smart battery not charged. Thank you. Did we get this? All right. Cool. That's working. Excellent. Let's take a look at the direction. Oh, we can do this. We can do this servo now. Um, but let's look at the directions real quick. Hopefully there are English ones. Just a few things. <laughs> I just want the quick, where's the quick guide? <laughs> uh, quick start. Mount the ESC. Connect the ESC. Connect the ESC receiver lead to your throttle port. Connect the battery. Calibrate the ESC to the transmitter. Done. Mounting the motor. Mounting the speed control. ESC programming via push button. And where is programming via... Oh, there's a programming box option. Where's the way to program it from the radio? Oh, here we go. Press and hold the programming button. Probably too late for that now. And this is probably going to bore everyone to death. Let's see, where is it at default-wise? Forward reverse, so it should be instant. Good. And LiPo battery is the default. Auto cutoff is default. 
I think we're okay. Max force, max break force, initial break force, drag break at 70%. This is like, it's basically set up exactly the way I want it. For remote, go to the end of your telemetry screens. It'll guide you, eh? Oh. Okie dokie. I remember now. There we go. It's in the menu on the radio. Thank you, Dana. Why did you choose this over a two-in-one brushless? Well, uh, because sometimes brushed... I like... Sometimes I like brushed. And these are more affordable. And I wanted to try it. And they sent it to me. <laughs> so it was worth giving it a shot. Um, yeah, cool. All right. That's great. So if you do want to program from your radio and you have a smart equipped radio, you just scroll all the way to the bottom, like Dana said, and poof, you get that. Um, right steer hundred percent for five seconds. Two, three, four, five. Was that left or right? That was right. Now left for, uh, Five seconds. Five. Did nothing. Ah, there we go. Running mode for reverse. Yeah. Now you can change all the settings uh, from the radio as opposed to going through the button pressing. So much easier. Love it. All right, that's cool. And that's it. Awesome. So uh, it also would have all the telemetry. So it will show you uh, receiver voltage that it's getting. Right now it's getting 5.2, which I don't know if you can adjust on here. You might be able to, but I don't think so. Um, press any key. Where's the any key? Or you can change the BEC voltage. Maybe we should go back in and change that. Give that raw 500 more voltage. There we go. Okay, cool. Done and done. All right, now we can connect the servo horn. It's not a Jeep, it's a Chuck. It's a Chuck Mashigan is, is his name, and Jeep designing is his game. <laughs> Matt, get a smart car. I need something bigger than that. Uh, Brian, I don't like the rugged either. I prefer the scroll wheel of the 5C or the DX5 Pro like I'm using here. That's just me. It's my preference. Um, okay. Let's flip this back over here. Mount our servo horn. They had it all wacky, of course. Um, let's see if we can kind of fix what they. What did you do? What have you done? Uh, not helpful. There we go. That's better. Okay, so spacer. Arm, no, bolt, then spacer, then into the servo arm. Go gentle, gentle. How 
I love the scale mud. It definitely got muddy. No doubt about that. Okay. Now, I would probably Loctite these things. I just haven't. Just realized you can clock the steering wheel in the DX5 Pro. Uh, yes, exactly. Hi, Ben. How are you? Ben, is your Jeep still in your driveway? All right. Zing. That's great. Now, is that going in the proper direction? Let's get all these wires wrapped around the tire, too. That's a good idea. That's much better steering than it came with. I will tell you that much for sure. Now it's not, now it doesn't want to, oh, probably a voltage cutoff, that's why. All right, there we go. Wait. I think the steering's reversed. Breaks Chuck, poor Will Arms. <laughs> uh, steering. Turn right. Yes. All right. There we go. Success. Great. So now that we've got all that stuff installed, cross thread is free lock time. <laughs> yeah, that's one way to do it for sure. Um, okay. Now we can pop the body back on and basically be done with this guy. Uh, oh, looks like I have to get rid of some things out of here first. Like... To disconnect some of these things. Let me just do that real quick. Like extra servos and stuff. Voice activated? No. Um, only problem is the DX5 rugged seems very complicated for stuff. Had a buddy that had a DX5 and could not figure out on uh, on it is the only reason I have not gotten one yet. Um, I don't personally like the rugged i don't i don't care for the touch sensitive controls i think that stuff is not good that's just me okay goodbye to the old 1040 and hello to the new smart 70 70 amps of goodness now let's see if we can do this all in one shot here without scratching anything. Yes. Oh, confidence is key. And we're in. Great. Now let's just get this positioned properly on the chassis. And I think we'll go about popping the body back on and then we can call this one done for today oh this room is a mess i'm not sure if you knew but we're doing a bit of a mayhem again uh sort of a christmas theme and that one's wrapping up very shortly now where did i put all the bolts for this You'd think, one would think, that I'd keep all that stuff sort of handy. Oh, these are them. I think. <laughs> Gotta get the card back in here. Why won't you go on? Uh, did somebody ask about affordable servos and then I didn't answer? <laughs> I feel like that's something that very much definitely just happened, and I apologize for that. Uh, Spectrum makes some pretty decent ones uh, that are more affordable. 
Um, but I can't, for the life of me, think off the top of my head which ones those are. So that's not going to be much help, Matt. Oh, the hot girls are here. <laughs> Get those hot girls out of here. We don't need them. We're playing with tiny trucks today. One of the body bolts in your vanquished tray. I thought of that, Ryan. Oh, the test fit. Thank you for the reminder, Turbo. Stupid idiot. Almost blew it. Let's do that first. Get this crummy chassis out of the way. Add it to the pile of junk. What an absolute disaster I am tonight. These live shows are hard. Ah, okay. Here's the BRX02. And its wheelbase is what? Like 13.8 or something? Eh, not going to work, unfortunately. Wheelbase is right. But there's too much junk up front. And not quite there. You'd need to trim some stuff away up front or move the servo. Only way to get rid of bots is to make the chat subs only. Oh, interesting. I hadn't considered that. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of other things. The shock placement gets in the way too. Um, I mean, remove the inner fenders and then you'd have room. But that servo up front is really the main issue. You could probably move that servo back. Um, but yeah, I mean, just cut the grill off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's an option too, I guess. I don't know. I don't think this is the perfect fit. Um, it would require uh, some noodling in order to make it happen. But it could definitely be a thing. At some point. But I'm getting that Series 3 Defender when that comes out. And I'm going to put that on my BRX02 because those had leaf springs. Series 2, A, eh? Something like that. All right, let's get this back on. Mr. Chuck Mashigan. We don't buy RC four wheel drive anymore. Not since they sent Matt two Christmas cards. <laughs> I don't know that they if they if they had their druthers, they probably would have sent me zero Christmas cards, if I'm honest. That's okay. Capra would fit. Some people have been putting um the mini Capra, the UTB eighteen. I think that one works quite well for um uh, the, the Wrangler uh, YJ from Tamiya, from what I've seen. Right. Do these rear screws first. Tater Tops, thanks very much. Sorry about the Jeep. Wanted your opinion. Send 450 with car trailer versus TRX6 hauler. Also, did you see Mark showing off your Earth Roamer? Yes, I did. I scolded him in his own chat. I said, that's not for sale, despite what you might think. Um, uh, of those two choices, I'd go hauler. It's a much better overall driving enjoyment experience, I think. I think you'll have a better time with that. That's just my opinion. Uh, plus, it's just like it's more... You get, it's more substantial. The CEN stuff, I just feel like it's a bit, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not like it's cheap. It's not cheap. It just doesn't seem as substantial for the money. I guess that's what I sort of. Get 
Up there. Receiver. No crumbs. There we go. Okay. So we'll mount that in there. There's already trays for both the ESC and the receiver, which is really cool. Um, we'll do that another day. But it's just nice to have a more reliable, more programmable ESC option in there. And I love tying it into my own transmitter. That's the best part. Cool. Craig Thompson, even, uh, he owns a hobby shop. He said the Send 450 is not worth the money. It's kind of toy grade, just like that Mashigan. Hey, <laughs> but this Mashigan's only 329 bucks and can be made to be much better. So that would be, that would be my suggestion. Go hauler, not 450. Um, but there you go. That's all finished. Let's get that off the bench. Picard will be thrilled with that. I'm thrilled with that. I do honestly think that at some point I'm going to look at an optional different chassis. Because I think it deserves something a bit more substantial. Uh, let's get all this dirt off of here. Because this is filthy and hideous. Just tossed a motor on the floor. Because that's how we're doing today. Also, having a much better servo in that Mashigan is going to make that chassis come alive a bit, too. It was really, the servo was wildly underpowered. Not good. Now, some of you may have noticed that I've painted my Bronco. Uh, this was airbrushed with um, Mission Models paint. Have you guys heard of that company before? New to me. Um, airbrush, uh, very good quality, good flow. Uh, these bottles have a ball bearing in them to help keep the paint uh, nicely mixed and not all cloggy uppy at the bottom. Video, I hope you're watching for that cloggy uppy. I don't know. A feeling of fresh dirt in my hand. Cool. Um, and uh, I wanted to give it sort of a more retro look. Um, it may look a little yellow to you. It's a little more mustard here. Uh, the fenders and the top are sort of a cream color. What do they call it? Um, insignia white. And this is, like I said, it's uh, for airbrushing, but it's for like hard bodies. They also have a line of uh, polycarbonate or Lexan body paint as well. Uh, but this was new to me. I saw it in the hobby shop when I was picking up some stuff. I was like, you know what? I'm going to give that a go. Uh, needs white wheels. Yes, definitely. Uh, vintage white wheels are certainly on uh, the agenda. But um, otherwise, I thought it turned out pretty good. This is the upgraded one with the lower uh, ratio uh, transmission. And... Um, yeah, it needs some tiny... Where are my tiny bumper stickers? I don't even have a set of my own. Are the fenders removable? The fenders are all part of... Like, it's all one piece. Fender, slider, fender, clips. It's all one piece. So here, I'll take the body off. You can see that it's like all one piece that goes throughout. So you can cut the fenders out, um, but you're going to lose... A lot of rigidity. You can do whatever you like, though. It's your truck. Um, but yeah, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to do something a little bit different with this one. And uh, not go with sort of the standard color scheme and do something a bit different. I thought it turned out pretty good. Um, I hand-painted with some paint markers the wipers and the lettering on the front grill. Uh, is there an interior? Not... That I know of, not from Traxxas, uh, but I bet you there's already some enterprising 3D printers out there that have already got some that are available. Uh, these are also those Mickey Thompson Baja Pro X. I have not glued these because these are the stock wheels. Um, I'm waiting on some beadlocks. Traxxas does have a bunch of beadlocks coming out, method beadlocks, and I wanted to get a set of those. Those I will paint uh, this sort of insignia white to match. 
but these are super easy to uh to paint up the the um the body's like the the white the body that you get that's unpainted is the white one there's no difference it's uh just as glossy and um and uh with a little bit of primer which i also use the mission models primer as well um it all went on really super smooth and easy uh, i like airbrushing indoors in the winter especially and on small stuff like this i did in fact paint the mash again with my airbrush too but i hated doing it because it's such a huge space it takes up a lot of room Here's cheers to beers, boys, as my friend K-pop would say. Um, what else was on the list for tonight? I need to check the description. I can't for the life of me remember what else I'm supposed to be working on. We did the SCX6. We did the Smart Firma 70 Mashigan conversion. We added a Reefs 500 Raw to that. Do you have to scuff it before painting? You don't have to scuff it. Um, you could. You could give it a little scuff. I would only, I would use like a, uh, like one of these Scotch Bright pads. I would use one of those to scuff it, or like twelve thousand grit. Um, we did the. I showed off the Bronco. Uh, this I love these things, man. I think Traxxas did a really good job on these. I'm pretty, uh, pretty chuffed by how that looks. Uh, I still have the Defender. Ooh, let's talk about the Defender for a sec. Um, now, the Defender is true 18th scale. The Bronco is more like, what did, what did we say, 19th scale? Um, why is your Bronco banana cream pie theme? Because <laughs> it's retro, man. It's retro. Um, let's talk about this one should we do something to this one too notice i did put the uh the bfgs on there that come on the bronco so that's the only change i made to this one so far i would love to give it like a camel trophy but i've already done a yellow one so we should do something else to this one find me here's a here's some homework for you find me a good looking livery or should i replicate 17 and a half scale <laughs> right Sure. Um, find me a livery online, uh, and maybe I'll choose your 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 choice. <laughs> Put it in the comments after this is over, and uh, let's taco about it. Um, and uh, we'll come up with something cool for for this guy, because as as much as I'm leaving the chassis stock, I want to uh, change up the body. Should I do the one that I did on my on my TRX4 Defender uh, with the the yellow, orange, red striping along the the side and the Big Night Customs logo on the back? I am leaving it alone, Brandon, but like leaving it stock in terms of the electronics and the the everything underneath. These are the BFG tires from the Bronco, but otherwise it's stock, staying as is. Chrome wrap and 24s. Uh, defender pickup conversion that would be kind of cool right we could do that we'd have to sand out some door handles and stuff but that's pretty easy we can do that we'll give that a go okay cool that's that's something uh okay i guess that's it for that oh we're supposed to talk about uh cob leds um i happen to have a little strip of it here that i soldered up um, this stuff is crazy awesome. If you have not seen it, uh, we did a little demo on the, on the live stream last night. Um, but it comes in a big roll. Like this. And you buy this on Amazon. And as you can see, it's just a big giant strip of this LED lighting. And they call it chip on board or COB. And um, it's very flexible, as you can see. You can kind of bend it any way you want. Uh, so really great for, like, undercar lighting, if you were to do that. Or, um, you know, strip um, light bars and such. The density of the LEDs is so great 
that um, you quite literally cannot see where those LEDs uh, start and stop. So I'm just going to plug it in here. Am I? I mean, I should, I should be able to. Now it doesn't want to... Oh, there we go. Hang on. There. Wait. There. It's very bright, as you can see. Stay on. Oh my god, come on. Just stay lit. There. Okay. Stupid bright. That's correct. That's a good way of looking at it. If you look really close, you can see the LEDs in there, but they're so tightly packed that it really does create a pretty awesome um, pattern of solid light. Comes in all kinds of different colors. And um, yeah, I'm going to use this stuff all the time. It's awesome. Need some clips. I do need some alligator clips. That would be very handy. Um, but yeah, that is on Amazon. Just look up uh, COB flexible LED light strips, 12 volt. And you will find it in many different colors. Very cool stuff. Uh, I was actually, for the upcoming project that I cannot talk about, um, we've got, uh, I've, I've built tail lights using that. Uh, which looks awesome. Post the link where to buy them. I think I did put it in the description, so you can check it out there. It, it'll go to Amazon.ca, but it'll open up in the Amazon.com store for most of the rest of you. Um, show me how... Somebody asked how the... Where is this? Can you show us how the Blazing Blazer hubs work? I can try. I don't know what state this one is in mechanically, so it may not do what we want it to. Um, but the idea is that these are sort of like freewheeling, as you can see. And um, there's some, some sort of differential in there. You're supposed to be able to pull that out and rotate it to a certain way, and then it becomes freewheel, as you can see. So, like, completely freewheel. does not spin the other tire. And then I guess you turn it another way and then it engages something else. Yep. These may not be functional. Is that still freewheeling? Yeah. Um, there we go. Now it's in four wheel drive. Cool, huh? Uh, you just spin them. It's not difficult. That's all there is to it. Um, just like a cool old locking hub. Doesn't have them in the rear, just in the front. Um, yeah. This needs a lot of work still, as you can see. <laughs> I have literally just let that uh, body filler set, and I have not even uh, sanded any of it yet. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a long-term project. Because this chassis needs to be completely taken apart, uh, stripped, and heavily worked on. Because it is it's about as vintage as it gets. But um, yeah, it's going to be great. So sorry I'm late for my favorite series. Don't let it bother you. Tamiya was way ahead of the curve, Kev. You're absolutely right. Uh, this, is, this is quality stuff. It's very, very cool. Um... But, um, as far ahead of the curve as they were, they didn't really do much beyond that, ever. They let a lot of other people catch up. And that's okay, too, right? I mean, they set the stage, basically. And for that, we can all thank them. Um, okay, I'm trying to think. What else was there? Can somebody go into the description and read the description and let me know what else I was supposed to do tonight? Otherwise, we can just end this episode. Uh, 
Uh, scale custom crawlers, that's going to be a full restore. I'm not going to remake it. Um, just a restoration for that one. Yeah, has anybody checked the description? Please let me know if I've missed something. Otherwise, we can wrap it up. SCX body clips. If you weren't here at the beginning, SCX6, uh, fine laser designs. Ugh. Basically, I gotta switch cameras. Hang on. Oop. And. Oop. <laughs> Beep. There we go. Ah. He created the come hither for the SCX6. There's a clip. You can see it. Great clip right there. And uh, that allows you to get in there without having to use a body clip anymore. And it snaps into place so satisfyingly. It makes this a lot easier to work with. And uh, I, for one, am very happy about that. Uh, the link to those products is in the description. And uh, Kevin's probably f working furiously at the printer, getting those printed out. They're done on a Forum Labs, excuse me, sorry, chair. Forum Labs uh, resin printer, so uh, good high quality parts there. Uh, Matt, you've done enough for today. Go get some rest. <laughs> for the Defender, do the Bowler Land Rover Defender hardtop series. That sounds like a bit of a project. That could be kind of fun, though. Uh, super cool merch. What you got for sale, Matt? Uh, well, we're out of stickers again. <laughs> you guys are amazing. 350 sets out the door in less than 24 hours, which is amazing. Uh, Rebecca was a huge help with that. Um, and some people have already gotten them, which is amazing. Uh, I'm super happy about that. Um, the only thing you specified was the Michigan engine swap. Okay, well then, I guess, I guess I've done enough. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I should show you that's, uh, that's changed. I mean... I did, I did do a little bit of work to the uh, the UTB-18, but I don't think anything has changed since the last time we saw it. Um, it has that uh, Holmes 380 Magnum revolver V2 motor in it, so it goes really mega slow. Do I have a battery charged for that right now? this one fit? I feel like this one's too big. Yeah, that's not the right one. Another one that's tinier. Here you are. Nope, that's a 4S battery. That'll blow things up. Do you guys have the problem where there's too many batteries? Man, oh man. I don't even know where... Many batteries, guys. Too many batteries. Here we go. Found it. It's really small. Uh, nice little Helios battery here. Uh, but you can run a full size 3S battery. Where's my remote? Sorry, transmitter. Um. it onto the UTB-18 and we'll power up. So tiny little 380 size brushed brushless uh, outrunner and um, <laughs> very slow. You can go fast still. But it's just got so much more control now. Which is just, that's just amazing to me. Still running the stock servo. Because it's actually a pretty decent servo. Um, but just so much control. And it's got that sort of like, it's also got a sort of FOC sort of thing. So it just maintains no matter what obstacles in the way. Pretty amazing. 
I've, uh, I've got the underdrive gears or overdrive. I've got the overdrive gears. Uh, Team Garage Hack is sending me, um, sending me their underdrive gears so we can really kind of get this thing cranked. Uh, but man, it's just so like this motor is just amazing. I love it. I like it's so funny. I like this size Capra more than the other Capra. Why? I just do. It's just great. Um, just looking through the comments here. Giveaway from last week. Uh, yeah, that won't be announced quite yet. Rebecca will be handling that. We'll get that done soon. Uh, which ESC? This is the Holmes uh, Crawlmaster Mini V2. Can't wait to see what the new Fusion SE. Yeah, I gotta check those out too. Any reviews on the Vanquish Class 1 tires? Sorry, I couldn't help it. <laughs> yeah, Josh forgot to send those to me, so uh, we'll get them soon. Yeah, this Carolina Ghost, this is completely new electronics. Um, Crawlmaster V2 Mini from Holmes. They're his revolver. Here, I'll take the side panel off so you can get a better look at it. Then I'll even zoom in. And then I think we'll call it because I've got to, I've got to do some car shopping. <laughs> I mean, I like my, I like what I've done to my, my larger Capra, the 10th scale Capra or whatever they're calling it. Um, but this size, I think, I think Axial nailed the size on this one. So under the man there it's so hard to see because it is quite dark there you can see it a bit better now there it is i'll spin it Yee. wow 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 So there you go. Um, great little motor. Fits perfectly. No mods required for that little guy. It's just awesome. And it looks pretty good with the side panels off, I might add. Uh, Blue Dooley, no. Uh, no leads whatsoever. Um, am I going to go for another Jeep? If I can get basically what I had again, that would be great. Uh, I can't afford to wait very long, though. That's going to be sort of the bigger issue. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, I think that's going to do it, guys. It's almost 10 o'clock, so um, I'm going to enjoy the rest of my evening. I hope you will enjoy the rest of your evening as well. Thank you so much for checking in and watching uh, What's on the Bench Weekly Live Edition, Episode 24. Uh, we'll be back to our regularly scheduled recorded program next week. Uh, but thanks so much for checking in, checking what's going on, and all the kind words. I appreciate that very much. It means a lot. Um, thank you to Chuck's RC Habit, RC with RC, the RC Underdog, Brian Harrison, John Roberts, 1.6 RC, Tony Spencer, and Tater Tops. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. And, um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your week, whatever you're uh, doing, and we will uh, we'll see you again soon. Have a great night. Love you. Bye.